good afternoon uh, uh, from Vienna. <laughs> good morning to Victoria. So, dear friends, dear colleagues, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to our seminar. Today's, our today's speaker is Jenie from the University of Victoria. So it was not clear to me that uh, Victoria is even more west than Vancouver. So good morning, Jane, and welcome to, to our seminar. So uh, our speaker uh, received uh, her PhD uh, from Dalhousie University in, in year 1990. And uh, this was followed by a postdoctoral position at CRM in Montreal under the supervision of uh, Francis Clark. In 1992, Jane, joined the University of Victoria, and she was promoted uh, 10 years later as a full professor at the same university. So Jane is, a, is an expert in um, optimization, crash analysis, and in particular, she, she focus, she's focusing on bi-level optimization applications. She's uh, yeah, one of uh, the, the most prolific members of our research community, is serving as a editor of uh, important journals, including sound optimization. And today's talk, Jane will talk uh, about her favorite topic. This is bi programming. So thank you for accepting our invitation. Good morning to Victoria. You have 50 minutes for your talk. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Radu, for a nice introduction. And thank uh, organizers, Radu, Shohan and Matas for invitation. I really like uh, this uh, series of talks and uh, it <laughs> helped me to get, uh, get, uh, uh, get contact with uh, people around the world. Um, so as, as uh, Radu said today, I'm going to talk about bi-level programming problems and uh, time flies fast. I've been working on this area <laughs> since uh, 1992. Okay, so. So this is the talk of uh, my, uh, the outline of my talk. So first I'm going to give introduction to bi-level programs with uh, background and applications. And since uh, it's, it, if you want to give, uh, uh, optimity condition or, or solve a problem, by level problem, you, you always have to uh, reformulate uh, some kind of single level problem. So I will talk about a few uh, uh, reformulations. Then I will talk about optimity conditions. I will, co I will focus on a, a new uh, optimity condition called directional optimity conditions. And in uh, numerical algorithms, I will give the difference of convex algorithms. Okay, so this is the bi-level program. Uh, it has uh, two variables, X for upper level, Y for lower level. And uh, other than some uh, standard const uh, constraints, equality, inequality, you can have uh, the, the most important thing is that you uh, here you have a constraint that y must be a solution to a parametric lower level problem. So given a fixed x, y must be must be a solution to this uh, problem. And so uh, here, usually in the literature, uh, the functions are assumed to be uh, uh, not as assumed to be smooth and uh, one deal with uh, equality uh, or, uh, and or inequality constraint. But uh, for, for simplicity, we let's just say that it has an inequality constraint. Okay, so uh, suppose that for given X, the lower level can be, uh, has uh, just one unique solution. Then you sub substitute the, uh, this uh, yx into the upper level, then the bi-level program becomes a one-level optimization, okay? But the yx is an implicit function. And if it's a very nice, if you can find the, say for example, second order, uh, first order directive uh, implicit, uh, explicitly, then maybe you can 
deal with this kind of problem. But uh, usually the lower level has uh, multiple solutions. Then there are two versions of the bilevel program, optimistic and per pessimistic. And in this talk, we just deal with the optimistic uh, type. Okay, so the, uh, the first formulation of a simple case, that is uh, when the lower level uh, is just a fixed set. Uh, it, the, this, this kind of bilevel was introduced by Stapberger in 1934. Um, and so it is also in economics known as a Stapberger game. And in economics, uh, a, a very important class of problem called principal agent, also called moral hazard, is a bilevel program. It is actually a very hard bilevel program because uh, the lower level is non-convex always. And this is a situation where the principal or the boss can only observe the outcome of the agent action, but not the action itself. So the question is how can uh, the principal design a contract in order to maximize the expected utility? subject to the maximizing behavior of the agent. So this uh, uh, important problem has re received a lot of attention and Nobel Prize has been awarded twice for study of the, this kind of economics problem. So once in 1996 and another time in more recent in 2016. Okay, in uh, optimization, uh, it was first introduced by uh, Brocken and McGill, 1973. And after that, there are more and more applications. And here, I would just like to uh, talk about the, uh, the model selection in machine learning. As I know, this is the uh, first paper who introduced this reformulation. So recently, there have been uh, more and more work on the, uh, this kind of high-level programming called uh, hyperparameter select selection problem. So uh, usually in uh, machine learning, uh, uh, in a tr you have a you minimize a uh, function f and plus a, a regularized term, and here lambda is given, but uh, uh, what kind of lambda should be uh, should be used, right? So uh, now, the, so if we consider selecting the appropriate lambda, and with the correct uh, correct uh, mo model, then uh, this is can be uh, reformulate. Uh, this is uh, considered as a bilevel optim uh, of problem. Okay, so uh, I will use. Uh, so what kind of F, right? What kind of uh, model um, it is? I will use a simple uh, problem, a training problem lasso to explain the, the idea, okay? So for, uh, suppose we have X and, and Y, okay? And uh, these uh, X are predictor variable and uh, Y is a response variable. And we have some, we have N data sets and assume the model is linear, then we want to study relationship between X and Y. And the classically, if we have enough data, we will just uh, use the uh, least square linear regression. But if, the, if we do not have, uh, if the number of predictor variables are larger than the number of samples, then the, the classical linear regression is year post. And because there are some variables are uh, actually not, shouldn't be in the model. So uh, the, the, the popular method is to use lasso. So for lasso, given lambda, you solve the uh, kind of penalized uh, uh, least square problem. And so the bigger lambda encourages sparser optimal solution, but how to choose a lambda so that the model is correct. Okay, and uh, 
if you have a lot of data, you can leave out some observation to test how good is your result. But we already uh, have uh, n that's equal p, so we cannot afford to leave any observation for testing the result. So uh, an, uh, a strategy is use the data, the given data to test both train and test. So these are is a uh, strategy is called uh, K4 uh, cross validation. K is usually three, five, or 10. So, uh, so, so first you split the given data set into K disjoint blocks of equal, approximately equal si size. Then uh, you just uh, pick, uh, pick the omega K for each K, you pick omega K as your test and the rest as training set. And then you compute the fitted value. Okay, so you could, you could do the regression or you could do the support vector machine uh, classification or yeah, any machine learning, right? Using this uh, strategy. So then uh, after we got the fitted value set up, okay, then we want to test how good it is this. So we compute the mean square error on observations. For example, for the, for the regression problem, we will test this mean square error. And then compute, uh, then after we test all the K, K groups, we take the average. So this is the, this is the cross validation error. Then we repeat the step two and three for various value of lambda and the hoping to find a minimizer find the, the, the minimize the cross validation error. And in the meantime, get the best fitted value. So in statistics, uh, either a grid search or a path following algorithm is performed on lambda value to select the value of lambda for which the cross validation error is smallest. But this approach do not scale well, okay? It has a lot of uh, limitations. So, but in essence, the cross validation in Lasso is the following bi-level program. You fix lambda, upper level, variable, and you train. So here is the Lasso problem, given lambda. Then uh, the overall problem is choose the lambda and the corresponding theta so that you have the minimum uh, cross validation error. So if the problem, this problem can be solved, then we can obtain the optimal parameter, penalty parameter and the best fitted value at once. Okay, so now I'll uh, talk about the uh, various uh, very reformulations for to solve by level program. So the oldest one, um, and, and the most uh, naive one is to, to use the first order uh, optimal condition, right? To replace the lower level problem. And uh, it, you minimize over the original variable as well as multipliers. But then the resulting problem is this problem, right? Uh, mathematic program with a complementary, complementarity or equality or e equilibrium constraint, we, can, we say MPCC or MPEG. So here you just have, this is the KKT condition. And uh, the drawback is that uh, the, the, if, you, if the lower level is not convex, then uh, even if you solve the MPEG, the true optimal solution um, may, may, be, may, be, uh, may not be recovered, that is, uh, uh, among it, the true optimal solution may not be among uh, stationary point for MPEG. And even when the lower level problem is convex, a local optimal solution may not be a local, of MPEG may not be a local optimal solution of the bilevel because we include the lambda, uh, we include multiplier as a variable in MPEG. Okay, uh, so unless uh, you find, we try to find a solution where uh, you, the solution U is uh, global in, in the U variable. 
then uh, otherwise, uh, uh, if multiplier is non-unique, uh, you, you may not recover. You may not uh, uh, a local recover a local solution of the bilevel. Okay, so there are other formula reformulations. Uh, for example, you can just reformulate uh, the low level problem by uh, its. Uh, let, let me let's see. Let's call this one B B stationary condition. And uh, but uh, this uh, normal cone. Uh, may be hard to deal with, and uh, but some research has done when the 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 constraint for the lower level is independent of x. So compared with the MPCC reformulation, this is uh, it's easier for this uh, reform uh, formulation to satisfy constraint qualification, and so based on this uh, reformulation, some uh, new shop of Dini condition has been derive in here, so I'm not giving detail here. And then the second approach is the value function approach. So this is, uh, this in this approach one, we use this uh, value function, okay? The here um, is the value for given X, it's optimal value for the lower level problem. And just uh, instead of saying that Y is a, uh, in the, is in the solution set. We just said that the y achieved the uh, optimal value, right? So fxy is uh, less or equal to value, the optimal value. So essentially this is equal because uh, this is always, this is always greater than equal zero. So uh, this, uh, it's obvious that uh, for this reformulation, one do not need any convexity for the lower level. Uh, however, the, this, uh, if we use this uh, very function uh, reformulation, um, the stationary condition may be too strong and not satisfied. So then uh, another uh, reformulation is, is to combine the value function and KKT together. So this KKT condition uh, is just uh, redundant, right? Provided the, this uh, uh, value function constraint is, uh, is given, this is redundant. So you can basically, you can just add any uh, necessary condition onto the value function constraint. So uh, here, where recently we have also proposed to add first young condition or the B stationary condition. Okay, so now uh, this advantage is that it is easier for the resulting stationary condition to hold based, based on the combined program. And uh, Okay, so now uh, we must know that we, or it is well known that uh, for MPEG, uh, M Marcosori from Moritz constraint qualification or fail for MPEG. And this is the same uh, if we, even if we use the value function approach or combined approach, MFCQ still fail. Okay, but uh, the, the MFCQ fail does not mean that the, the stationary condition does not hold. So we look for other type of, of uh, constraint qualifications. So one uh, strategy is to consider partial calmness condition. So we know the, the difficulty is this uh, constraint. I, I, I call it the value function constraint, right? And so the partial calmness condition just said that if, uh, if this constraint can be uh, partially penalized to the objective function, then, there's, uh, then the difficulty is removed and then the, we can just uh, apply the standard constraint qualification to the rest of constraints. Okay, so uh, it has uh, the partial com calmness condition can be applied to KKT, uh, to combine program, to value function approach to the combined program with various kinds of uh, necessary conditions. Okay, so now one question is how, now is how 
streak is this partial calmness condition. So the, just recently, we have shown that at least for the case when X is one dimensional, the partial calmness for the combined program is a generic condition, but the one for the one for the value function reformulation is not. So it's uh, uh, this means uh, the combined program for the partial calmness for combined program is uh, is a typical uh, condition. Okay, so now the, the, la the last reformulation I want to talk about is uh, semi infinite programming reformulation. Because uh, you say Y is a solution, right? It, it just means Y is feasible. So G X Y less equal zero. And then for all that feasible, uh, we have uh, uh, the objective function at Y should be less equal objective function for others. So this is quite obvious. And this part has, uh, because the uh, constraint for the lower level is, uh, uh, in general, infinity, infinity, many of them. So it's an infinite, semi-infinite program. Uh, it's actually generalized semi-infinite program. If uh, here y is uh, y depends on x. Okay. So uh, when uh, all functions are polynomials and KKD condition holds, uh, then. Uh, we can find multiply or lower level problem as a polynomial or rational function. And so denote, so, so say we have this uh, function lambda, then uh, here we can eliminate the, 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 very, the, the multiplier variable and replace by lambda, okay? So this is just, uh, the, uh, this is just KKD condition, but with uh, uh, expression, for lambda, and this is the semi-infinite constraint, right? So this, this represents the optimality of Y. And based on this reformulation, recently we proposed a numerical algorithm to globally solve the polynomial by level program. Okay, so uh, no, I'm not giving detail here. Okay, so uh, now I finish here this, uh, uh, section on the reformulations. So next I'm going to talk about uh, optimality conditions. Okay. So, uh, so what is the motivation? Uh, as I said, the usual constraint qualification such as MFCQ does not hold for any of the reformulations. Okay, so we need to do uh, uh, see what, what can we do. So, um, so just remind uh, everyone of what is the value function reformulation. It's, it's this problem, right? Okay, so this is a value function constraint and this is a feasible, a lower level feasible condition. So uh, let's recall what is, a, it's supposed the value function is a, a Lipschitz, a Lipschitz, this is function, then uh, we can write the first joint condition. You can always write the first joint condition. So there exist some multipliers, okay? R for objective function, lambda for the value function constraint, and the mu for, for the uh, G. And uh, here, this uh, first joint condition. Okay, so now here we use the limiting subdifferential. It's a set. So, Jane, may I ask something? So yes. this this value function is usually the, the bad guy. Is it is? Uh, I mean, you you said it's that you assume that yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> but it's you not that it... bad. <laughs> it's not okay. that bad because if uh, say if the uh, lower level is uh, supposed your constraint uh, has set it lower level satisfy MFCQ mm -hmm. at the solution, then it's Lipschitz continuous. Okay, so this was the question. So you have to assume. Yeah. MFCQ for the Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if the limit if the so so the, if the limiting sub differential this is a set, right? If we, we can replace it by a smaller set, then this uh, resulting first young condition is sharper and we 
the constraint qualification is then weaker. Okay, so now uh, we will uh, use this kind of um, directional limiting subdifferential. Okay, so it's suppose we have a direction D, a vector direction D, right? Then um, in the limiting subdifferential definition, instead of that XK converges to X bar, right? You that you just consider XK uh, going to X bar in direction D. Okay, so here this is a, a regular subdifferential. Okay, so we consider this kind of limit directional directional limit. Okay, then, then uh, here, for example, uh, consider this uh, absolute value function, okay? And then if we take the limiting subdifferential at zero, then it is, um, oh, I, actually, I, I, I make a mistake. <laughs> it should be one and negative one. Oh, no, no, it is, it is that. Uh, oh, it is correct. It's correct. It is correct. <laughs> Suddenly, I saw. It. <laughs> okay, so now, uh, uh, suppose we have a direction. So, so suppose we use one. We we'll go to the right, right? Uh, you go to uh, to from the right going to zero, then you get one, and if so, you see this is much a smaller set. And if you go from the left, uh, then it's negative one. Okay, so this is a. Uh, uh, then uh, we consider the problem. Okay, okay. so how we use the direction? What kind of direction? It's not like we can use any direction, okay? So now suppose we consider a problem, uh, minimize fx subject to fg at x less or equal zero. Then this is the feasible region. And suppose the objective is smooth, but the g is, uh, each, each g, GI is directionally differentiable, okay? So that uh, IG bar be the index of active constraint, okay? So uh, I, I make this, uh, I, I assume that if I is not in active set and the direction direct equals zero, then this will simplify my, uh, um, my uh, notation. So G prime, G prime means the directional directive vector. Okay, so this linearization cone is a kind of approximation to the feasible region, right, under some condition. And then we're interested in this uh, uh, critical cone. So we only interest in the critical direction, which is a direction in the linearization cone, and also has this uh, uh, directional directive uh, less equal to zero. Okay, so, uh, the, the any direction in, in this cone is called critical direction. And these are the, the direction we interest in because otherwise if uh, there's no critical direction, we already received the, we uh, achieve the mi minima. Okay, so these are interesting, uh, we interest in this. So suppose we can find a critical direction and um, Okay, so this is a uh, result, it was uh, uh, proposed by Hamu Freer. Um, suppose, uh, so now the assumption is G is, uh, we, we use a direction directive. So suppose G is uh, directional differentiable, but may not be differentiable, right? And um, in direction D, if this condition constraint qualification holds, then we have the KKT condition, directional KKT condition. So here, the limiting subdifferential is replaced by the smaller directional subdifferential. And uh, other, uh, this is the complete standard complementary slackness, right? Now you also have this uh, actual condition. So this, uh, this uh, also restrict the, the size of the multiplier, right? Okay, and this is a kind of constraint qualification um, uh, called the first order uh, sufficient condition for matrix subregularity. Okay, so it, if, if we do not have 
we do not have these, uh, these uh, restrictions. It just says that uh, this is uh, the uh, element in the directional limit, limiting subdifferential is the linearly independent. But with this restriction, then it's kind of positive linear independent or something, or even uh, restrictive. So uh, here, when D is equal to zero, then it re then this uh, is actually the same as saying uh, uh, this MFCQ host. Okay, because if D is equal to zero, this is uh, like a redundant because the direction directive will be equal to zero. So there's no no this kind of constraint. So I will just uh, uh, call it the direction the MFCQ. <laughs> okay, in for in this talk. So, uh, okay, so we wonder whether it, it, we can apply to bilevel program, right? Unfortunately, as we know, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the MACQ does not hold for, for very problem. So now very function reformulations. So, so this is the same, uh, we tried, but uh, so we, we show that uh, the, the direction MACQ still fail in any critical direction. So the, this is uh, not, I, I guess it's not surprising, right? So what should we do? Uh, we will uh, now, uh, okay, we'll, we'll, we will uh, introduce a, a calmness type of condition, but the directional one. So uh, here is a kind of um, a neighborhood Okay, uh, it is when the direction is equal to zero, then it's the direction, it's uh, the neighborhood, the standard neighborhood, right? So this is a ball uh, with a, a strong uh, radius. And, but when the D direction is a non-zero, non -zero, then you can use this direction to, to, to make a one section of this ball. So the, the, this uh, the blue part is the the directional neighborhood. You can see you have the two uh, positive number, right? The delta, yeah, delta is uh, decide how wide is this, uh, how how wide is this angle. So this uh, this, this is the directional neighborhood. Okay, so here we introduce the. Um, Direction version of the calmness, like calmness condition uh, is uh, introduced in, you can find the standard calmness condition in, in Clark's book. Uh, here we say that it is, uh, yeah, yeah, we say the problem is uh, Clark calm um, to distinguish the concept calmness for the constraint region, right? So here it in, involved objective. So uh, we say it's a uh, calm in direction if the x the x uh, solution to the problem p also solve this penalized problem but the penalized problem uh, is uh, is that now the penalized problem has constraint not in a uh, not in a standard neighborhood it's in a uh, smaller neighborhood, right? You see the blue part is smaller. So this is the requirement is, uh, is uh, weaker. So this is a weaker condition, right? Okay, so when, when the direction is equal to zero, then the direction of calmness reduced to the calmness condition introduced in, in Clark's book. Okay, so the direction of calmness, Clark calmness with the direction, non-zero direction is of course weaker. Okay, so then we have uh, this, uh, we, then we have this uh, condition. Okay, so this is the direction of KKT condition under the direction of calmness condition. So if you can find a direction, an, uh, a non-zero critical direction, then you can get a weaker condition, right? KKT condition. And so of course, when it's uh, equal to zero, then it recovers the original KKT under the Clark calmness, the classical result. But when the direction is non-zero, 
the direction of KAT condition is sharper. And, uh, and in the meantime, the calmness condition is weaker. Okay, so yeah, so this is uh, here we can apply to the to the bilevel program, right? So here is uh, critical the critical uh, critical cone, and then here we op, uh, assume value function is ellipsis and directional differentiable, and so then we have this condition. Now uh, here in this condition, every everything is uh, represented by the problem data. Only thing as uh, Radu point out here is uh, you need to calculate this guy, right? Uh, you need to calculate the, the sub-differential. Now it's directional sub-differential, okay? So that's what the job we have to do. <laughs> so we did, yeah. Uh, also another thing we have to uh, point out is that usually it's not easy you cannot calculate the subdifferential for the maximum value function. That is the negative one. You can calculate the, uh, the, the subdifferential for the minimum function. So, uh, but, the, but if we use the limiting, the limiting subdifferential, we do not have this equal. We cannot take the negative out of the operator. So we have to use the direction of, we, 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 uh, we just uh, use the direction of Clark subdifferential, right? You just uh, just add a, a convex hole to the direction of limiting subdifferential. Okay, so that's what we did. So under some conditions, we derive some upper exit mix for the direction of Clark subdifferential, and substitute this up up exit mix to the direction KAT. We attempt the condition in terms of problem data. So. Now, uh, <clears throat> I finished this section about uh, directional optimum mini condition. And I then question, next, question, yeah, okay. So for this uh, class of differential, for, is, is this a new object or is this something which is known? This uh, directional class uh, of differential? It, it's, it's new, it, it's, okay. uh, yeah. But it reduced but, to reduce if D is equal to zero then. But the, okay, the question is, do we have for this object, uh, let's say characterization by using uh, uh, also the derivative, directional derivative, which then gives It's this... not the same because the one is uh, uh, like a dual type, but the uh, direction directive is like primary type. Uh -huh. Yeah. Is... Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, if uh, Rado started to asking questions here, I would like to ask here as well. Uh, Jane, we have discussed mm -hmm. with this is Boris Mardukovich. Uh, we, we have hi. discussed. Uh, hi, we have discussed with you early uh, in more standard situation about possibility to replace uh, here Clark subdifferential. Yeah. yeah. What called symmetric subdifferential, which also uh -huh. has symmetry but much smaller than Clark. Yeah. What do you yeah. Think? yeah. Maybe possible, but uh, but uh, but. Uh, uh... Yeah, I think you you have uh, some some uh, some work uh, using the symmetric. Yeah, you can right, but the... I think not in direction, not in direction. That's right. Uh, no, yeah, that's no. the point. And if you would like to, you know, to uh, proceed in direction of framework, it would be a good idea to investigate yeah. this. Yeah, that, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can do uh, similar things. Yeah. Yeah, but it will be different result. You know, just uh, take care. Yes, of yes, this. yes. Okay. Good, okay. good point. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Boris. Thank you. Yeah. So now I I will talk about the last uh, uh, the difference of convex algorithms. Uh, many problems, many functions can be represented as difference of convex functions. For example, lower C two function, which is the maximum of of C two functions, or C one plus functions are difference convex, right? Uh, so the class of DC function is uh, is quite large. And if the and also if the lower level problem is called uh, completely convex, that it, me it means a uh, convex in both variable x and y, then the value function is uh, convex, and the value function constraint becomes a DC constraint. Okay, so but the, the to use this uh, difference of convex algorithm, 
one needs to study two issues. First, under what conditions all functions, including the value functions, are convex and Lipschitz continuous? The second, under what condition the extended NFCQ holds? So extended means that it also holds for some invisible points. So it is a, a stronger condition. So uh, this is the uh, difference of convex uh, bilateral program we, we uh, propose to study. So here X and Y are non-empty closed convex sets. G is convex on open set containing the set X times Y and the function, all the functions are convex on the open set containing this set. Okay, so uh, uh, you, may, if you may think that uh, uh, complete, uh, convex, uh, complete convexity are strong, but the recent results shows that uh, many problems, uh, bilateral problems can be reformulated uh, in a way that uh, the objective function is completely convex. Okay, so uh, our assumption are, are these, uh, these, these are quite, uh, quite uh, general. So we have to uh, have a low level solution and uh, also feasible region should be non-empty and the objective is uh, bounded below. And uh, we, uh, here it's important to assume because uh, our, we do not assume the function to be uh, differentiable, right? So it's convex, but not differentiable. So we need to have partial directive formula, okay, this. And, but uh, if we have these uh, assumptions, then the, the partial directive formula holds, okay? So uh, if, like in machine learning problem, we usually have a uh, function is uh, C1 respect to one, one of the variables. So that's not, not bad. Okay, so the first lasso problem can be can be represent as uh, this kind of problem because you can just uh, divide, uh, you, you can just change variable, right? Just uh, just uh, instead of lambda, you just use one over lambda, and now this function becomes a completely convex. It's a linear over, it's a square over linear function. Okay, so and also. Uh, yeah, and also this, uh, okay, so this problem is the uh, support by level model for support vector machine. And uh, here, uh, this, this is, uh, the model is, is, is in this paper and uh, we do numerical uh, experiment based on this model. Okay, so here upper level is uh, lambda and also the width of the, yeah, of the, of the band. So W bar is also at the upper level. So given lambda and W bar, this, uh, you, you do, this is a lower level uh, support vector uh, training problem. And then I'll find, uh, then this problem will find the optimum lambda and W bar and at the same time has uh, optima W and C. Okay, so if for this problem by changing, change, change your variable, uh, the, the bilevel problem model uh, can be reformulated as a bilevel program with completely convex lower level problem, right? So here also all the assumptions uh, that we impose are satisfied by, by this problem. Okay, so here, okay, so how, Okay, so so how how we uh, how we deal with this problem? Um, here, uh, under our assumptions, uh, all the functions are convex, and the value function is, is also Lipschitz continuous. That's important. And also, we have this uh, formula for subdifferential. So we need the element of the sub of the subdifferential. Okay. So and also. Uh, remember that we we said that the, the constraint qualification will never hold, right? So we we uh, use uh, Islam here to relax it. So either Islam, if Islam equals zero, then we do it's the original problem. Otherwise, uh, it is a, a relaxed problem. It means uh, Y is a kind of approximate solution to the lower level problem. Okay, and uh, now if as long as E strong is positive, the extended MFCQ always hold. Okay, 
So then the algorithm will like will work like this. We given a, a current iterate point, we solve the lower level problem with a global minimizer and a corresponding multiplier. Since it's a convex problem, this can be done. And then we select an element from the sub-differential. Okay, so use the multiplier at the global optimal solution, we can find an element from the clock from the from the subdifferential of the value function. And then here we compute the next iterate as a proximal minimizer of this uh, sub problem. Okay, so here's F, uh, the, here, here is the linearization of the F2, right? So objective function of the upper level, the, the con concave part. And then here we use the uh, penalize, penalize term, a penalized parameter, right? Uh, to penalize the, the value function constraint. And this, uh, this part is the linearization of the value function. So after we linearize, this becomes a, a convex problem and we add a proximal term, it becomes strongly convex problem. And also we do not need to find exact solution. We just find a proximal solution. Okay, so then uh, we said that a uh, point is KKD condition if uh, there exists a, yeah, uh, here a multiplier such that is whole. So here just a difference of, the, so these are sub differential are just, a, yeah, it's just sub differential, okay? Just a, because everything is convex. And then uh, here is our result. So interesting, uh, we do not need to assume any constraint qualification. It just uh, for for the, uh, for at the xk the iteration point, we just need to assume the KKT condition holds. That's it. And uh, and and we we allow either is strong positive or is strong zero equals zero. So so when I is strong is positive, then extended MFCQ already hold without any condition. When is wrong equals zero is the original problem, although, uh, but uh, it does not mean that the solution uh, procedure cannot be done. It's uh, if the parameter sequence is bounded, so we can still, we can still conclude that uh, the, the accumulation, any accumulation point is a KAT point. Okay, so I'm going to show you some result compared with the MPEG approach because uh, uh, in the original paper, paper where they propose this model, they use MPEG approach. And then uh, if you compare the, see the time is, uh, this is much, our algorithm runs much faster. Okay, so here, uh, see that. Yeah, and also in, interesting, you, you look at the, uh, you can also use the, original problem, not the relax, it's on equal zero is the original, right? If, and the result still okay, still good. I think I probably uh, ran out of time, right? Yeah. <laughs> Two more minutes. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, uh, and the, the error is uh, also pretty good. So um, here, uh, this, uh, okay, I, may, I mainly uh, uh, talk about the, the result in these two recent papers, uh, okay? And uh, also I mentioned about these uh, two papers and yeah, so these are reference. So I thank, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for a very nice talk promoting bi-level optimization methods. Are there questions? Hello. Yeah, I have one, a computational one. Um, what is the, the size of the problems uh, for which you showed the uh, computational results uh, on, on this slide? Yeah, we... Uh, 
just roughly in terms of maybe lower level variables, upper level variables, just to get an idea. Yeah. Uh, for this, for for the, this is uh, the problem here. Like, uh, okay. This is this problem, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the end here, end here, I think can go up to 10,000. 10, mm -hmm. Yeah, 10,000. And uh, I, and th this uh, upper level here for this problem is only lambda and this, right? So mm -hmm. just two variable. But, and the, the yeah, but the, but the theta, uh, so the W and and the C, uh, okay, so W and C together, I think, was intense, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, something like this, yeah, mm -hmm. and and yeah, for for this uh, the table I show you are uh, the because you want to compare with the original paper, so. They are uh, slightly smaller, but we also test uh, two or three bigger one. Yeah. So the data can go up to 10,000. Thanks. So it, you can use, uh, I think, scale, uh, big scale, large scale problem. Thank you. We have another question in the chat. If you can elaborate on the cross validation example. From mm -hmm. the beginning of your talk. Oh, so the, okay. Uh, the procedure, right? Okay. Yes. So the. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So you split, so for, for example, you got the data, you split. Oh, so the question is if, if, uh, is if there is some publication about this, I mean, or if he, if. Uh... Oh yeah, yeah, you can go, uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, so, yeah, so. so. Okay, this is this paper. Yeah, uh, yeah. This this one is hard to find because it's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, it's a conference proceeding or something. But the the two thousand eight okay. one and other related ones, or you can see the reference. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I I I I called the, the paper where we we use numerical, right? Yes. That, yeah, that that paper and others. Um, you can find, hmm? yeah, and also you can Google, you can search for the procedure. There are a lot, as, like it's well known in statistics, okay. I think. Okay. Yeah. Are there other questions? Then I have a question or yeah. uh, even two questions on the, on the convergence theorem. Uh, from the last part of your talk. Okay, sure. So how difficult is to guarantee boundiness? Uh, which one? So in, so in, you have a, you have this theorem where you describe the convergence of the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the question is, uh, to talk about accumulation points, the question is, is the sequence bounded? Or, or how difficult yeah, is no, it? No, no, yeah, yeah, if it's bounded, then if uh, it's bounded. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we do not know whether okay. it will convert. Yes. Yeah. And, and then I have to, to ask the standard question. I had to apologize for that. But but this this topic was addressed also in the context of a standard DC algorithm. So by by assuming mm -hmm. some metric regularity or some uh, critically assumptions, assumptions, uh, it was possible to prove uh, global convergence of, of the sequence. This should work also here for you for your method, mm. which is an adaptation of the DCA. Mm, yes, adaptation. Yes. yes. So yeah. one could one could probably also show some some global convergence under, as I said, either metric regularity assumptions or cortical assumptions. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. It, uh, extended MFCQ is the metric sub regularity condition, right? Okay, but but. 
Yes, but in this oh, case, oh, you will have to ask this condition on the, let's say, solution operator of the whole problem. Yeah. And, 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 and this, this, this allows to prove global convergence of, this, of the sequence. Or there is another direction to go by assuming critical savings of, I mean, this was done for the standard DCA yeah. algorithm, yeah? And I guess that this, this can be done also yes, for same. this adaptation. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. So if you look at this problem, uh, this is a problem, right? We reformulate yes. as a DC problem. Yes. Okay, so the, yes. So then we prove, uh, first uh, prove, uh, yeah, the same. The, yes. The convergence. Yes, yes. So it's in the, in the spirit of DC algorithm. Yes, yes, yes. So we have another question in the chat. Yeah. But do you want to ask the question, Alain? Should, should uh, I read it? Yeah, um, no, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to, to say. So. Yeah, I just wanted to ask um, from the, the list of constraint qualification that we discussed whether I missed something. Uh, if you don't have this perturbation on the value function constraint, is it possible yeah. to still derive optimality condition with certain sort of constraint qualification if we don't have partial calmness? That's that's what I was just asking. Oh, you mean if you work on the, this relaxed? You know, if you don't, if you don't have the perturbation on that epsilon. Um, perturbation. Yeah. Then. 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 No, that's right. Then the constraint qualification do not uh, hold. But is there, if, because it seems I've seen something like, maybe yeah. since you have a paper where you're showing that, I can't remember the type of constraint qualification, which mm -hmm. can allow you to get optimality condition for the value function approach without partial calmness. Is there not something? Yeah, like you can that? use uh, the other... Uh, the the matrix of a regularity type. Okay. Right? And uh, there are some, uh, we have some work on, uh, uh, re recently some work on um, the, uh, the relaxed constant rank positive uh -huh. linear dependence. That type of condition will, will can, can be used. And, right? and, and so uh, you, you, you need, yeah, uh, it we cannot use um, uh, MFCQ, but uh, but we can try other like the matrix subregularity type. Anything lead to matrix subregularity will work. Okay, but yeah. those sort of condition are probably not generic, right? Um, the uh, but the partial calmness is generic. The, oh. With the combined with the combined program here. I mean, I mean, we we prove at least for the case when x is uh, one one condition one uh, dimensional, but it gives some indication, right? So, uh, so if we do not add any condition, it is not uh, generic. But if you add the first order condition here, mm. then it comes, yeah, because. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We have another question. So Abbas Kadem is asking, uh, why is your method better than ADMM? So I don't <laughs> see that one can apply ADMM here. How, how do you, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's a difference of convex. Yeah, I don't, don't know. So ADMM, this is, this is, it is not an option ADMM here. I mean, one cannot apply. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, of course one could write an, an algorithm, but, uh, there is, there is no convergence or, okay, then, uh, are, so are the other questions? So last mm -hmm. question. So, I mean, you, you very much promoted, Jane, these uh, directional limiting subdifferential. Uh, is this the right name? I guess so, yes? Yeah, yeah, okay. yes. <laughs> so, yes. So do we have, do we have calculus rules for this uh, object? Characteristic? Calculus, calculus <laughs> rules. Oh yes, uh, they are they are calculus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know uh, this. Uh, uh, this. Let me, uh, I mean, some sorry. formula composition with yeah, yeah, uh, linear. The, you know. You, you can here here you can yes uh, yeah yeah. So most of the formulas are uh, the same, but uh, okay. some formula uh, needs some condition. <laughs> 
of course. Well, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But uh, mostly it remain the same. <laughs> okay, thank you. So if there are no other questions, then I propose to stop here and to saying our speaker again. Thank you very much, Jane, for a very nice talk and a very nice discussion. So uh, yeah, we had we had today many participants, uh, many Chinese friends and colleagues <laughs> yeah, attend the talk. So uh, just want to say that we, we will uh, post the slides in the video on our website, and that our next speaker will be Michael Hintermüller from the Weierstrass Institute. And uh, I would like to wish you a nice week. See you next Monday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank everyone. Thank you. So, Jane, this was uh, impressive yes. participation. Yeah?